Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of pharmacology. We are doing uh, Lippincott and uh, our topic is GI drugs, gastrointestinal drugs. Or usme we have already uh, discussed the drugs which are used in peptic ulcer disease and gastroesophageal reflux disease. So today we will focus on the drugs which are used to control chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting. So those patients who have cancers and they undergo chemotherapy, they routinely experience nausea and vomiting. So in order to control that nausea and vomiting, we have to use certain drugs so that the chemotherapeutic uh, uh, intervention does not lead to the, you know, uh, very bad effects of nausea and vomiting because nausea and vomiting in chemotherapy patients, uh, they uh, degrade the quality of life and therefore it is very important to control these symptoms. So although nausea and vomiting occur in a variety of conditions, uh, such as it happens in pregnancy, in motion sickness, and in other GI illnesses. Uh, and this is always very unpleasant to the patient. But the nausea and vomiting that we are talking today is produced by the chemotherapeutic agents. And nearly 70 to 80% of the patients who are undergoing chemotherapy, they experience nausea or vomiting at some stage. So 70 to 80, it's a big, big percentage. Around 70 to 80% of the patients experience uh, nausea and vomiting associated with chemotherapy. Several factors influence the incidence and severity of chemotherapy-induced uh, nausea and vomiting, which is abbreviated as CINV, including the specific chemotherapeutic drugs. So, here they have made a table which tells you the uh, potential of uh, nausea and vomiting induction by various chemotherapeutic drugs. So for example, uh, these are the group of drugs which are highly potent in terms of causing nausea and vomiting. Cisplatin, Dacarbazine, Streptozocin, followed by uh, this group of drug and the least effect is produced by bilomycin etoposide. So you should be aware of this table. That's a very nice illustration of uh, which drugs will cause mild, moderate or strong emetic potential if you are using them as a chemotherapeutic regime in the patients. And obviously it depends upon patient to patient. It varies uh, also as per the dose and cycles induced during chemotherapy. There are so many uh, factors controlling this, but uh, these are the general considerations which you should understand. Young patients and women, they are more susceptible than older patients and men. They're kind of uh, resistant as compared to the young uh, patients and women. 10 to 40% of the patients experience nausea or vomiting in anticipation of chemotherapy. So uh, just the, even, I mean, the smell and the discussion about chemotherapy, that can also lead to uh, episodes of nausea and vomiting because your brain thinks that something bad is going to happen to this. And if somebody has had a chemotherapy episode, then the person is able to perceive the unpleasant uh, activity. Now, this nausea and vomiting not only affects quality of life, but also lead to rejection of potentially curative chemotherapy, where you sometimes have to stop it. In addition, uncontrolled vomiting can produce dehydration and other metabolic uh, imbalances. So overall, this is a very important uh, consideration to understand that those patients who are chemotherapy, who are getting those patients may nausea and vomiting kaise control karna hai, right so before we understand how to control it we should understand what is the trigger mechanism how is it produced so there are two brain stem sites uh, they have key roles in vomiting reflex pathway the first one is called uh, there is a zone which is uh, located um, uh, in the ventricle so the caudal end of the fourth ventricle and that zone is known as chemoreceptor trigger zone it is outside the blood brain barrier which means that any changes in any chemical stimuli in the blood uh, also in the csf will stimulate and trigger this zone this is called chemoreceptor trigger zone okay now the second important zone which you have to understand about the vomiting is the vomiting center itself it is located in the lateral reticular formation of the medulla and it coordinates with the motor mechanism of vomiting so for vomiting there is a sensory input so you have a stimulus which induces it can be a bad smell it can be even high blood pressure so anything which activates this chemoreceptor trigger zone that is the sensory input and after the sensory input you have a motor activity so for example 
your diaphragm goes up your pharyngeal muscles contract and you vomit out so this is the motor limb of the vomiting uh, cycle and this is then controlled by a vomiting center which is located within the substance of the brain in the medulla to be very specific the vomiting center also respond to afferent inputs from the vestibular system so can say be particularly in motion sickness so there are vestibular canals in there and they also send input to the uh, vomiting center so that's how uh, the vomiting mechanism works there is trigger of uh, the chemoreceptor trigger zone and then there is a motor activity by the vomiting center okay now uh, chemotherapeutic agents can directly activate the medullary uh, ctz or vomiting center your chemotherapeutic agents your drugs are used for chemotherapy they can activate the uh, the centers directly several neuroreceptors including dopamine receptor type 2 and serotonin type 3 which is also called 5-HT3 they play a critical role so if you have to control this vomiting reflex in chemotherapy induced patients you have to block 5-HT3 and you have to block these receptors often the color and the smell of the chemotherapeutic drugs this can also induce vomiting and nausea now serotonin activates 5-HT3 receptors on the vagus and splanchnic afferent fibers and they then carry sensory signals to the medulla leading to the emetic response. So essentially the drugs will be blocking this pathway and that's how you understand the drugs okay so considering the complexity of the mechanisms involved in MSA it is not surprising that antiemetics present a variety of class and there's so many drugs so there are anticholinergic drugs especially the muscarinic receptor antagonist is copolamine and h1 receptor antagonist um, there are some examples there and if you look at this table this kindly summarizes broadly that uh, if you have to stop this vomiting mechanism you have to block 5-HT3 so there are several 5-HT3 serotonin receptor antagonists um, dolazetron, granicetron, ondensetron and these are all the drugs which have been used okay then there are some other classes as well benzodiazepines corticosteroids and uh, other substances which uh, are against some other neurotransmitters which are involved in the vomiting pathway such as neurokinin 1 so uh, it looks a little dry but if you study with a concept then you will grab it similarly these uh, uh, this diagram is representing the anti-emetic potential of the drug so if you are using this class of drug serotonin your 5-HT3 uh, antagonists they are amongst the most potent anti-emetic agents followed by all these and followed by antihistamines and anticholinergics they have the least potential for anti-emetic activity okay now phenothiazines uh, example phenothiazine if you see this is prochlorprazine and this group of drug uh, act by blocking dopamine receptors so dopamine i told you is involved in the activity of uh, initiation of vomiting reflex similarly 5-HT3 receptor blockers because this is involved okay they selectively block 5-HT3 uh, uh, receptors uh, in the trigger zone and therefore uh, they block the, the initiation of the sensory stimuli by the chemotherapeutic agents they are excreted via urine and uh, one important side effect is QT interval prolongation which is a serious thing and they can uh, this can happen with high doses of ondensetron and dolacetron for this reason the indication for uh, CINV prophylaxis was withdrawn with intravenous dolacetron so that's kind of a no-no particularly IV because it interferes with cardiac cycle then there are other benzamides uh, one of the several substitute benzamide with the uh, anti-emetic activity is metoclopramide widely used uh, is effective at high doses against the emetogenic cisplatin particularly and uh, uh, it basically inhibits dopamine in the chemoreceptor trigger zone so that's how it works okay it also enhances gastric motility and is also used in those patients particularly there are diabetic patients who have gastroparesis so it increased the motility of the GI system then there are drugs which are um, um, benzodiazepines and uh, there are different uh, drugs in this class uh, alprazolam for example lorazepam their beneficial effects may be due to their sedative and anxiolytic and amnestic properties so that's how they are working they are suppressing the overall activity and also vomiting corticosteroids such as dexa and methylprednisolone used alone are effective against mild to moderate emetogenic chemotherapy so not very highly potent but uh, if you are using combination treatment uh, if they are used in uh, multiple drug regime then they are uh, even more uh, potent 
the neurokinin 1 receptor antagonist and the examples are written over here they target the neurokinin receptor in vomiting center so that's another one which uh, needs to be remembered and these oral agents are indicated for highly or moderately emerogenic chemotherapy regime so they are pretty effective and they are usually administered with dexamethasone or um, a serotonin antagonist unlike most serotonin antagonists these agents are effective for the delayed phase of um, uh, chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting and um, these drugs undergo hepatic metabolism primarily by the CYP3A4 system and therefore anything which is interfering with this system will also alter the concentrations of these drugs okay so this is an inducer of CYP3A4 and CYP3-2C9 system and it also exhibits dose dependent inhibition of CYP3A4 so all these considerations are important because if you are using certain drugs there will be issues so co-administration with the strong inhibitors or inducers such as clarithromycin uh, that will be an issue so you have to consider this okay now um, usually single drugs don't work very well so we have to move towards uh, combination therapies uh, and antimetic drugs are often combined to increase their efficacy and decrease the toxicity so corticosteroids for example are usually combined with serotonin antagonist for example or any other class of the drugs such as benzodiazepines and whatnot antihistamines such as diphenhydramine are often administered in combination with high dose metaclopramide so basically the drugs are combined to give uh, maximum efficacy and low side effects and some uh, examples are given here in terms of potency so for example if you combine dexa with ondansetron uh, very very effective uh, these drugs less effective but uh, still highly effective and the lowest uh, potency you see for this combination so these are the combinations which are routinely used for these patients okay so with this we end the drugs which are routinely used for patients who are undergoing chemotherapy and have nausea and vomiting experiences so that's all for today's video i'll see you in another video very soon take care of yourself